he, he abandoned you. He's in Dublin. He's not interested in this. God damn it. He had enough of you. <laughs> Tom, uh, a couple of days out, you know, from Wayans, from the fight, does this feel as big as it should be? You know, main event in London. How's it feel? Oh, it's feeling pretty good right now, mate. I'm absolutely loving life. This is my dream. So looking forward to Saturday. Going to be the absolute time of my life. I'm going to go in there and enjoy it. Do you have to do like any you know, mental preparation, visualization for maybe not the fight itself, but like the walkout, just the, the emotions of this type of environment? Yeah, mate, I've been meditating like six hours a day, just getting in the zone. No, mate, do you know what? <laughs> um, I've said this a few times, like, it's like asking a woman who's never had children, what's childbirth like? I don't know. I've never, um, I've never experienced that situation of walking out in front of 20,000 people. Um, and the raw just being unbelievable. Like, this is why I want to do it. This is why I wanted to do this before I'm going to step up and be in the top five and challenging for the title and stuff like that. Like, I need to tick this off my box mentally to know that I can perform in front of 20,000 people. And I'm looking forward to seeing how I react to it myself. Yeah, it's going to be super interesting. Um, in terms of you know, the actual fight, uh, Volkov's a unique opponent in terms of what he brings to the table, not only skill set wise, but you know his physical attributes with the height and stuff. Uh, how do you prepare for that? I've had loads of tall sparring partners, loads. Um, I've not sparred anybody under like my size for the last 10 weeks, really. Um, yeah, just bringing big guys in. We've been working out good with... Uh, the coaches and stuff. I've been over to Holland to train with uh, the king of kickboxing, Mr. Rico Verhoeven, and Benny Adigbuy as well, who's a six foot seven guy, really tall guy as well. Two of the highest level strikers in the world. So I'm doing everything that I can to, to you know, be able to fight against tall guys like that. Yeah, a lot of evolution have you felt in this camp? Just from it seems like all angles. Oh mate, I think I've improved more in this camp than I than I have in the last two years. Honestly, like I feel I feel so good. I feel. So in such a good place mentally as well. Like I'm just here enjoying it, man. This is this is what my focus is on. Is just enjoying it. I'm not trying to. I'm not even thinking about the result to be honest. I'm not even thinking about how I'm going to finish the fight or if it's going to go the distance. I couldn't give a shit. I'm just going to go in there and have the time of my life, man. This is this is my dream, and I'm going to enjoy it. Yeah, it's why those things, right? Like you feel if you do just the right things, the results will kind of produce themselves. If I go in there and do me, and have fun, I can beat anybody in the world. I know I can. If I go in there and overthink it and try and work to a strategy and do everything perfect, I can lose. So I'm going to go in there and just have the time of my life and, and enjoy this thing. It seems like you don't want to think much beyond Saturday night, but if you do get this win in the way that you want it, um, there's no going backwards, right? Yeah. Like You feel like this puts you uh, on that track, and there's only extremely big things ahead. Definitely. But obviously, I feel like I'm ready for that. So um, here we are. We're moving forward. We're moving up in the world, hopefully. All right. appreciate it, Tom. Thank you. Thank you. Tom. Hello. Just, how you doing, man? Um, I'm just wondering, what's it been like preparing for an opponent that, you know, for a while it didn't seem like we, we didn't know if he was going to make the fight. Obviously, he has now. But was that difficult with so many questions being raised about whether he'd be able to get over here to compete? It was difficult, to be honest. But in them situations, you've got two options, really. You can either completely lose your shit or just try and focus on yourself. Obviously, I was trying to just focus on myself, but it, there was a couple of days I nearly lost my shit, I'll be honest. But um, both of those options don't really change anything. Like, if he, if he can come or not come, it, um, it doesn't really change if I lose my shit or not. So I was just trying to just focus on myself. And yeah, there's, there's not a lot that I can personally do. So I was just trying to focus on what I can control. You said you were over at Rico Verhoeven, and um, I know Ngannou was training with him as well for a while. Eric Nixick was saying that, you know, people were saying, oh, this, you know, Rico Verhoeven can't match this guy's style. It's a bad opponent. But he said he actually brought him in to show the flaws in Ngannou's game, like see, see how he'd pick him apart. Is, is that a similar reason to why you went over? You know, a guy who's a master of that kind of striking realm, was, was, was that beneficial for you? I went over because I've known his coach for a long time, uh, Dennis, and he's a really, really good guy. And... It's not like an open door policy there, do you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you can only really go if you kind of invited over. So I was invited to go over and, and I went over there and I just went there because I just don't think there's anyone, obviously the big guys, massive guys, and I just don't think there's anyone in the world with it. Well, there's not anyone in the world with as good a striking as that. Obviously Volkov is striking heavy. It doesn't mean that he's just going to strike with me. He might try and take me down, but I wanted that exposure to the highest of the high level because there's only one way you can go around them guys and 
well, they will beat you up, but after hopefully you'll improve a little bit. So yeah, really enjoyed it, and I'll, I'll definitely be going back. What what will this mean to your dad? Like, I mean, this is the guy who who got you into martial arts. You're walking out for a main event in UFC London. I mean, it must be an incredibly proud moment for your family. I would imagine so, but um, do you know what? I'm just trying to not focus on any of that stuff because if you think about that, like, I'm trying to fight Volkov, mm. and that's it. Like, all this exterior stuff, if you start taking that into consideration, mate, there's too much pressure on you. So I'm my only focus is just enjoying myself and going in there and having the time of my life, and that's it. I'm sure it means a lot to my dad, definitely. It means a lot to me. It means a lot to a lot of the people around me. But if I take that with me, there's too much pressure, so... I'm just thinking about enjoying it, and that's it. Nice and conscious. Tom at the back over here. Um, just curious, I mean, when this call came or when this event was originally announced, we heard that you were going to be fighting Abdul Rakimov initially, and then obviously the promotion to the main event. I'm just wondering what your reaction to that uh, upgrade was initially and if you felt the added pressure at all. Yeah, mate, I didn't sleep for about two weeks when I found out, I'm not going to lie. Um, yeah, Volko's a massive fight. Abdurki, every fight in the UFC is massive. There's gonna, I'm not gonna like say that it's not. Every fight in the UFC is massive, but someone like Volkov, who I personally have been watching since he was Bellator champion, like um, it's massive for me. It's massive, and yeah, just with that kind of name, what he brings to the table, the experience that he's got, I'm aware of what a big fight it is. So uh, yeah, I'm definitely not took him lightly. That's for sure. I've treated him exactly how he should be treated, which is very, very serious. And then yourself, Chris Dawkins, uh, Tai Tuivasa. Do you kind of feel yourself at the, the crest of this new wave of heavyweight that's been coming out in the division? Definitely. I mean, we're all like young, up-and-coming guys at this point. Uh, big fan of both guys. I think uh, both guys are very skilled. Obviously, Chris took a bad one in his last in his last fight, but it doesn't. This is heavyweight MMA. Do you know what I mean? Like that that happens sometimes. Tai has also been up and down in his career, and now he's on a good run. So. Yeah, us guys are definitely, like, we're all going to fight each other. We're all going to fight each other once, twice. We'll have trilogies, possibly. Like, we're, like, me and Ty are late 20s. I'm not sure exactly how old Chris is, but we've got another 10 years in this thing. So, um, yeah, the time's going to come when we all fight. But right now, we're all we're all building. Obviously, Ty is ahead of me and Chris right now. He's doing good things, man. And good luck to Ty. Thank you. Well, I'm just in front of you. Um, obviously, we spoke about Ty and just Chris right there. Do you feel like you bring a more diverse skill set than those two guys you mentioned? Um, I don't know because speaking from my own experience, there's like a lot of these heavyweights and people who watch this sport and stuff, they think that I'm just good at certain things. And it's not that I'm just good at certain things. I've just not had the opportunity to show what I am good at because I've been in the octagon for such a small amount of time with my fights. So um, just because they've not shown a full skill set doesn't mean they've not got a full skill set. Do you know what I mean? Look at Francis Ngannou in his last fight. He wrestled the whole time. Just because he's not shown his wrestling doesn't mean that he can't wrestle. So, yeah, there's, lot, there's a lot of stuff that us fighters have got that we don't really have opportunity to show yet. It doesn't mean that we've not got it. So I'm sure those guys are really well-rounded just because, like me, um, I ain't had the opportunity to show basically no wrestling, no grappling, no cardio, no kicks, like I've not done any of this stuff. Just because I've not had the chance to doesn't mean that I've not got it. I'm actually very good at this stuff and I, I will show it over the next 10 years. But right now I've not had the opportunity and, and neither of them guys. So I'm sure they, they are well-rounded and stuff, but they've just not had the chance to show it yet. And obviously, you know, with Volkov not being able to come over for, for, for a while, it seemed like his main event was a bit in jeopardy. Did the UFC ever offer you anyone else and say like we have someone as a backup plan? Yeah, and the backup plan is here, but oh. I'm not sure I'm allowed to say so. Um when you asked before, um, yeah, there's still a backup in place who is here. So I still think that, I don't know, just in case probably every, anything changes last minute, he's already here, ready to go. So, um, yeah, like I say, I'm not sure I'm allowed to say who that is at this point. And just one more from me. Obviously, you mentioned going over there to Holland to train. Someone that we know very well has, you know, gone to Sweden recently is Darren Till. Uh, just kind of what your thoughts on him going and linking up with Hansa is and if you think that will bring a lot of difference to his game. I think it's a great move for him. I think it's great um, having another guy like that who's around his size and obviously extremely, extremely high level in parts of his game that he's maybe weak at. You know what, though? Till is actually a great wrestler. He just had a bad time in his last fight. And I don't want to put words in his mouth. That's his prerogative to tell everybody or not tell everybody what's been going on. But 
Um, yeah, I think it's great just to get a fresh look on things and different eyes around him and feel different energy in the gym and stuff. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a good move for him, and I'm sure he'll come back and he'll start working again, and everything will be good going forward. Cheers. Hey Tom. Tom. Hello. Uh, whilst we're on the subject of Darren Till, he's obviously someone who's headlined many a main event. Is there any advice that he's given you coming into this one? And if so, are you able to share that with us? Yeah, of course. Um, I spoke to Till, spoke to Bisping, spoke to a couple more guys who, who have main evented in the past. And everybody seems to like have a similar or the same kind of answer. And it's just like, just treat it like any other fight. Do you know what I mean? Don't build it up too much because building up fights is like your guy's job. Do you know what I mean? Like, we shouldn't build it up too much in in our head like I'm the worst guy for it like I see Volkov he's had a million fights I've been watching him for years and you build him up to be this like boogeyman in, in your mind and I ain't doing that shit anymore do you know what I mean like I used to do that before I was in the UFC and then I got to the UFC and I, I used to think oh all these guys are so so they're not mate they're another guy in front of you do it, have another fight with a pair of gloves on and I'm going to treat it that way don't get me wrong I took Volkov more serious than I took anybody else but at the end of the day, is another guy stood across from me with a pair of gloves on. And if I punch him, he will go down, S same as anybody else. So obviously you're the main event, Tom. But I wanted to know, is there a particular fight on the card that you're looking forward to? Of course, I'm going to say Arnold Allen and Dan Hooker. Come on! What a fight that is! It's an absolutely amazing fight. And someone else on the card, who, um, Mohamed Mukhaev. Yes. Um, I just wanted to ask you something, because recently he said, uh, he showed a lot of love to your dad, and he said that, he taught him jiu-jitsu, so yeah. I just wanted to get your thoughts on how you think his career will go in the UFC. I've known Mohammed since he was 12 years old or something like that. He, like, he's been training with my dad for a long time. He doesn't actually train with him no more. But uh, he got him into jiu-jitsu, my dad, I think. And uh, yeah, he showed, showed him the basics and took him around competitions and did all the rest of the stuff. Mohammed's a great competitor. Like he's, he's a young, hungry guy and he's got a lot, a lot of confidence and I think he's got a, a massive future in the sport. And I know you're only looking forward at Volkov and you don't want to look past him, but let's say you get that win. I know a certain Cyril Garn is here this week. So how do you think that France versus England matchup may be next? First of all, let me start by saying Cyril Garn is a very handsome man. <laughs> just, off, just, 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 just starting off with that. Um, and uh, gr Great fighter, man. Great, <laughs> great fighter as well. But first and foremost, handsome. Let me, let me just add that, just for the record. Um, yeah, I think... I think it's a great fight down the line. Right now, he's way above me, way beyond me. Like, I'm outside the top 10, I believe, at the moment, or maybe just touching the top 10. He's just, just lost an interim title. Uh, sorry, the real title. He's just lost that. Uh, so he's way beyond me. But it's definitely a fight that's going to happen in the future. Like I say, those guys, me, Chris Dawkins, tied to Ivasa, um, even like Spivak, who I've already fought, who's coming up. Who else have I missed off? Curtis Blades. People like that, we are all... Have I missed any? I don't want to miss anyone off. Who else have I missed off? Arlovsky. Arlovsky's 500 years old. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no disrespect to Andre, by the way. He is old, though. Uh, but, yeah, we're all going to fight each other eventually anyway, so it's going to happen in the future. And just finally, Tom, I just want to say good luck on Saturday. Thank and you. I really hope you're looking Thank forward you. to your chips and gravy after your fight. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Tom, just to the back here. Um, Volkov, you know, he's had a lot of octagon time. We haven't seen you go past the second round. Are you approaching this fight any differently to, to your previous? I mean, I've trained for five rounds. Like you say, I've never gone past the second. So, new territory for me. I'm completely aware. If you look at the fact, like if you look at the stats on paper, this is a complete mismatch in his favour. I'm aware of that. Like, he has got so much more experience than me. He's fought far more high-level guys than me. Um, he's been in the top ten for, I don't know how many years at this point. I'm just, you know, an up-and-coming guy breaking the top ten on paper. But on paper doesn't really mean nothing when it comes to actual fighting. Do you see this as a test? And, and you know, you said you wanted to be able to showcase more of your skills. So do you look at it that way? Yeah, biggest test of my career, by far. I'm completely aware of that. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I would like to keep myself a secret for as long as possible. Do you know what I mean? I would Like, the he these heavyweights think they know such stuff about me. They don't know shit about me. They don't know nothing about me. Like, they've seen this much of my game. So anybody out there who thinks they know what my game is, they don't know nothing. So, um, yeah, if I, if I can finish him in 30 seconds, like I will do, but 
I would also like to do five. I, I'm, I'm not really bothered either way. And do you feel like you need to put on a statement win? You know, here, the UFC's first return to, to London since COVID. Does that put pressure on you? Do you see that as, a, as an opportunity for you to make a statement? I feel like I need to go out there on Saturday night and enjoy this, this, this thing. That's it. I'm not bothered about putting a statement on. Not bothered about knocking anyone out. Not bothered about doing an exciting fight. Not bothered about any of that stuff. What I'm bothered about is living my dream Saturday night. And that's it. Tom, over here. Sorry, mate. Okay. Hiding behind. Um, when your opponent was confirmed, and then obviously you've seen, like everyone else, what's going on in Ukraine and Russia, did you have many doubts that this fight would actually take place? Yeah. Yeah, I did. But um, again, out of my hands, really. Um, especially last week when they, the British Boxing Border Control banned all Russians and Belarusians, I believe, from fighting in the UK. Like, I was like, oh, shit. Here we go. But luckily, so far, so good. So we're all good. And how how's that affected your preparations with maybe a little bit of doubt that your opponent might change? It's not really. I, ju I just got to, as I said before, just got to control what I can control, and that is myself. So I've just kept, kept training as normal, um, focused on myself, and, and just moved forward from that. And have you been in regular contact with Dana White about the potential fight being moved at one stage. And we spoke to him yesterday and he said he was always looking at other options and alternatives if they couldn't get the fight on here in London. I have never met Dana White, never spoke to Dana White in my life. I ain't joking. I know a few people are laughing that I'm not joking. Never, never met the guy, never spoke to him. So I've had zero contact with him. Okay, and finally from me, um, obviously Volkov is a rather tall guy. Uh, I saw that you previously have fought and sparred with Tyson Fury. How was that experience? Is that experience going to help you at all? Uh, in terms of what? Sparring a tall guy? Well, I think Tyson Fury's helped me the most mentally. Obviously, I improved a lot. Um, my skill set improved. My boxing improved, definitely. Like, it brought me a long way, uh, skill-wise. But more so mentally, like he has it. I, I, if Tyson Fury ever gets a watch of this, thank you. Like, I've never actually had that chance to thank him for it. Like, he has completely changed my career and the outlook of what I've got on, on combat and at fighting. Like, uh, without him, I wouldn't be where I am right now because my mentality has changed completely since uh, since I trained with him. It was quite a long time ago now. Like, I was in my early 20s. I wasn't sure if I wanted to carry on with this sport or box or maybe stop fighting altogether. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And, uh, yeah, he just completely changed my whole outlook on everything. So, I, re I appreciate it. Thanks, mate. Tom. Hello. Hello, mate. Um, you're very open about your own insecurities and stuff, talking about like not sleeping for a couple of weeks when it's bumped up to the main event and stuff like that. This is a sport that historically fighters would mask that kind of thing. Do you think it's mentally beneficial to be so open and not hide your emotions? I, I That's what I feel like, yeah. I feel like if you talk about your emotions, you kind of let go of them a little bit. That's how I feel. And I have no problem. Like, I ain't got nothing to hide. If I... If, like, if you're going to come over to me on fight day and say, how are you feeling, Tom? I'm going to say, I'm nervous. I ain't going to say, oh, yeah, I'm feeling amazing. I'm going to smash him up, like all this other shit that people say. Like, if you're going to ask me an honest question, I'm going to give you an honest answer. And uh, that's just how I am naturally, I guess. I'm not I'm not trying to hide nothing from no one. Like I say, if, if you're going to ask me an honest quenshi, question, I'll give you an honest answer. Brilliant. I'll just stick with one question, and I'm the newbie, okay. so I'm not going to okay. go crazy in it. Okay. Hey, Tom, over here. Um, you've spoken about how you're going to be at your best when you are loose and having fun in there. Are you going to be able to do that and kind of drink in what is an incredible thing, headlining in your own country? Hopefully, but we don't know. We don't, I'm thinking positive about this whole thing, obviously. Um, do I know? No, I don't know. I've never done it before. Like I said, it's like asking a woman, you know, all that other shit that I just said. I'm not going to say it again. <laughs> but, <laughs> Yeah, um, I have no idea. I'm thinking positive. I'm thinking it won't affect me. But do I know? I don't know.